Glory to your name, Lord. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain that it was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. To 
make it to another day uh, You gave me eyes to see You gave me a tongue to talk to. And I want to thank you, Jesus For giving me legs to walk But to keep on blessing me Over and over Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. 
take me to the king I don't have a much to bring my heart is torn in pieces soul to save and fit for the sky to serve this present age my calling to fulfill oh may all my powers engage to do my master's will beloved we're, we're gathered here today on this Lord's day the Lord had allowed us to come and celebrate the life and Husband, 
nephew wore many hats, praise God. Yeah, praise God. But God has allowed us to come and just celebrate his legacy. And I don't believe Deacon Hutchinson will want us, praise God. Amen. To not give God some praise. Hallelujah. I wonder if I got some real believers out here today that know God is good. If you know He's good, come on, open your mouth and tell the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, amen, has allowed us to praise God, sharing this legacy. A warrior, a king, praise God. He was a faithful warrior. Praise God. He touch the lives of all of us here, praise God, and we can tell by the crowd that, amen, he touched all of us in some kind of special way, praise God, and I stand here today, praise God, because I'm honored, amen, to be called pastor, amen, by him, amen, a young man that he looked up to, but yet he called me pastor, and thank God for the times that we had, and I just remember those little teachings before Sunday school started, me and him would have some just talk and he would just sit and teach me and I would sit there and I would listen and take it all in, praise God. And just reminded of that I had to stay in the word because I knew he was an old school and I couldn't come with Mary had a little lamb. Amen. Huff and puff and blow the house down. I had to know some word. Amen. Praise God. And I know I was preaching good because he was my biggest cheerleader. He would sit over there in that corner and say, right, right. Amen. And then I know when he got real good, he would say, listen, 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 and listen. And then I know when it was super good because he would say, preach, pastor, preach. Amen. I look over at him and I see that smile and I just thank God for, amen, what he instilled in me. And I know, praise God, I, I can have some witness out here today that, amen, he touched your life in the same way. Amen. Praise God. So, but I want to just thank God for his wisdom. I thank God for his fellowship. Thank God for his service. I thank God for what he meant to the kingdom of God. Praise God. Amen. I know, praise God, we're all at this point to where, amen, we're going to miss him, but amen. I, I, I thank God for what he left for me. I know, praise God, when I get back to the church on Sunday, he may not be there, but his spirit will be there, praise God. Fourth Sunday of January, amen, he spoke prophetically to us, and I'm going to move on, praise God. I mean, he was speaking to the church, and one thing that he left to the church, he, he reminded us that we got to work together. Amen. He told us, amen, that God gave us all gifts, but he didn't give us all gifts for it to be sick, but he gave us gifts so that we could be using it. And he said, work, church, work. You got to work together. And I remember the same way the young man brought me some water. I bought him some water inside of there, and he looked at me, and he stopped, and he said, well, I, you know how he, I said, I ain't never been brought water before. <laughs> Uh, that must mean I'm preaching. I said, you preaching, Dick. You preaching. You just don't know. You preaching. But that's the kind of man that he was. And he always told us that, listen, I'm a numbers man. And I didn't really understand what he was saying at the time. Because sometimes, you know, as young vibrant preachers, we want things done right. Then we want things done right. We don't really look at everything. But thank God that I had somebody who didn't move when I wanted to move. He checked everything out and made sure it was right, but I thank God for Deacon Hutchinson and what he left in me and instilled in me. But I want to take the time now to honor our presiding bishop, Bishop James E. McKnight Jr. The Sunday Council, praise God. I want to honor all the superintendents, superintendents of marriages, and all the clergy ministers and their wives, amen, to each of you out there who may be clergy members and your wives, to each and every one in your special place, I want to honor you, praise God, today. And I honor my wife, praise God, and I want to take a special time to honor Deaconess Terry Hutchinson. We honor you, honor your family, honor the Hutchinson family, the McKnight family, we honor you and all the friends and family, we honor you today, amen. And I, I, I'm not going to prolong the time, but I, I, I'm a praiser, y'all. I'm sorry, but I'm a praiser, praise God. I, I, I just know in spite of how bad I feel, how bad it looks, 
my God is too good not for me to open my mouth and give God a praise. I wish I had about 50 people. Amen. We're not in the building, but we are the church. We are the church. I need the church to just open your mouth and just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right there. Amen. Amen. We do have amen a program that is set before us now i want to tell you now praise god amen we're going to stick with the program praise god and we have everything outlined and we have praise god reflections that are going to come up and amen i've already been notified that i am the mc amen and i want to let you know you have amen the opportunity to come and share praise god amen what you want to share with us today but when i stand up I ain't gonna be hard. Please sit down. Because we want to keep it moving and we want to be orderly and we want to be professional about this. Amen. So as we come, we have, praise God, invocation from Superintendent of the Gainesville District, Dwayne E. Gainey, District Elder of Gainesville District, Church of God by Faith. And then we're gonna have scriptures from Superintendent Kenzon Hutchinson, District Elder of Palaka District, Church of God by Faith. Pastor of Home Church of God by Faith, Hawthorne, Florida, and in that order, then we'll come back after those. At this time, invitation. Let us bow our heads. Times like these, we need a savior. Times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. This rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Father, we thank you for this day. This day that you also have ordained god we thank you for you are too wise to make any mistake you're too just to do any wrong god help us to rest in the fact that you are our father and we are your children god i pray that you'll lead us guide us direct us Hold us in your hand. God, I thank you for the life. Deacon Hutchison. Thank you for his legacy. Thank you for his service. Thank you for his wife, Deacon S. Hutchison, who we call Terry. Lord, I ask you that you would hold her in your arms. As the days and the weeks and the months begin to pass, hold her in your arms. Strengthen her, keep her. Let her know that you are with her. God, not only her, but this family. Brothers and sisters. The nieces, nephews, cousins. Those that held Deacon Hutchison so close. I pray that you strengthen every one of us this day. God, I pray that even in spite of this, when it looked like you don't get any glory, I pray, God, that your glory will rise among us, that we will even know that you and you alone are God. God, I pray that you do these things for us. We will give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, before we end this prayer, we ask you that you will touch our bishop today. Strengthen him now as he would give words of encouragement to everyone that will listen. God, I pray that you touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Strengthen him, direct him, lead God and direct him. And we give you praise for it now. Every blood-washed believer around this tent, will you just lift your hand and just say, thank God. Thank God. 
and thank God. Amen. I'll be reading um, Isaiah 25th chapter 6 through the 9th verse. And it reads, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all people, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shrew that enfolds all people, that the sheets that cover all nations he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. I'll be reading the first Corinthians, first Corinthians 15th chapter. And it reads, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will, we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thy sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But I like this part, it says, but thanks be to God. Let me say that one more time. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Christ Jesus. God bless you is our prayer. We come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Amen. We're going to transition into our reflections and we're going to have reflections coming from Elder Rufus Hutchison, Miss Vicki McKnight Duncan, and Mr. Tom Spain, and finally, Elder Willie J. McKnight Sr. in that order. To Bishop McKnight, excuse me, and his wife, all these elders, superintendents, we thank God for each of you today. We are here to give a few, few reflections on uh, my cousin Dennis. Dennis and I had a trade. His trade was carpentry. Mine was AC. Dennis called me over to his house and he said, Bells, man, I, my air conditioner is messing up. I said, okay, I got you. He says, um, maybe you can look at it and tell me what's going on. I said, I'm pretty sure I could. So I got to looking at the unit and, and I figured out what was wrong and I told him the price that it would cost to do the job. And this was what got me. Then his eyebrow went up in the air and his mouth kind of twisted a little bit and he just looked straight down at the ground. And so that kind of puzzled me. I didn't know how to take Dennis. You know, I thought I knew him, but I didn't know how to take him. But once he did that, I said, okay, man, okay. I'll come down a little bit for you. And so he looked at me and he put that smile on the side of his face. So when it came down for him to do some work for me, <laughs> that smile came right back at him. I lift that eyebrow up and put a little smile on my face until he changed his price. But this is a good man. He took pride in what he did. And some of the work that I've seen from Dennis Man, I tell you, I would put it on a showcase. 
That's just how good he is. But one thing Dennis don't want to do, he don't take no mess from nobody. When he set a price, that's what he wants. He don't change, except he changed for me that one time. But he stick with what he put out. But it's worth what he does. So I say to you, we're losing a good cousin, you losing a good wife, a husband, some of you losing a good brother-in-law, brothers, sisters, y'all losing a good man. I want to say to you, keep on praying. Keep your head up and know that God will take care of you. God bless you.
Mr. Tom Slade here. I ain't here. I'm Susan Spain. Uh, my husband here, Tom, asked me to speak on his behalf. Dennis uh, was a part of the Spain construction team for 10 years. He was special in so many ways. Dennis worked hard, he was responsible, and he worked for a paycheck just like everyone else. But for Dennis, it was more than just a job. Dennis had a dream. He set his goal and devised a plan. He wanted to use construction to better his life. Dennis should be a role model for all young men. He decided what was important in his life. He didn't take any shortcuts and he wasn't distracted by superficial things. Tom and I felt like very proud parents when <laughs> Dennis invited us to his new home that he had built for Terry and himself. I don't think Dennis ever realized the accomplishment that he did. It was an absolutely beautiful home. When he left Spain Construction, we were happy and sad. We were sad because he left us, but happy because he was taking the next step of his dream we were shocked and saddened by his death. I know Dennis is with us here today. He lives in our hearts and our memories, and there is no way anyone can take that from us. Mary Elizabeth Fry wrote a poem, which, um, which I would like to read. It depicts more than what I as a person can say. She said, do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush. Of quiet birds in circled flight, I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I want to thank Terry for honoring us by asking us to speak today. I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone. In the name of the Lord, do honor our presiding bishop, all of the clergy, their wives, and certainly to these families, honor my wife, my pastor, Pastor Henderson, First Lady Henderson, certainly to this great family, I hope that we will keep lifting up our head, although we have had this blow, but we will get over it to a point. Sister Terry, I bless you. Certainly been praying for you. I just want to say that on the chestnut staff and everyone in your respective places, Dennis, he was a special man, very special. He taught Sunday school for us. We go further back than that. Just one day I saw him and he said, I'm going to come up and help you. My business. And after a while, he showed up. I'm here to be a member of a lot of Church of God by faith, and we gladly accepted him as members. And he started serving. Taught Sunday school, which he was a great teacher, and he worked on the finance board. And how many know he wanted to account for every penny, every penny. And he came up short, he was gonna look. 
until he found it. But but he certainly was a special young man, and I thank God for him. You know, uh, he did so many things. I uh, thought about when uh, he was a guitar player. He worked with the choir. Work with the music department and see many like anything he found out to do he would do it he worked around the church doing different things sometimes we call for men to come and it won't mean no harm but how many know it's sort of hard to get men to come out on Saturday morning but they would come out and work and do things around the church he took pride in his work I would watch him as he did some work in uh, our house. He wouldn't mess up his good wood. He would take him a couple old pieces of wood and he would cut them to make that shape that he wanted without messing up the good wood. You know, if you just start messing up good wood, that means uh, people you're working for, they're gonna have to go buy some more. But then it made sure that he had that cut and that angle was right. And then he would go to work. He put up some molding for me in my house and I, I was watching his cuts and his joints. And everyone was there. You didn't see all this crease in between. I took the time to make sure it was gonna fit. Ran into a problem with the shower curtain and couldn't find a rod long enough and I say no problem I'll make one and he made a rod and her still working and that, that's been 20 some years ago he didn't know what to do and as he worked around the church and whatever he could find to do he took uh, enjoyment in doing it and, and sometimes he would have to uh, speak we allowed him to speak, and he did a great job in that. But most of all, what I gained from Dennis, he was quiet in his own way, but yet he liked to have fun. But he wanted everyone to know when he worked for him, I'm not going to waste your money. I'm going to make sure I do my best. And he did his best as he worked with the church up there for a number of years before I retired and uh, he stayed and I was glad about that. He was loyal to that church. He was loyal to the family. When I would go and see him, he always had something to say. He told me one time, he loved to eat, he said, the best hamburgers in the world it was right out of High Spring, uh, a lot of way in High Spring. So, well, listen to him, I went and bought one one time. I, they were pretty good, I had to give him credit. So, so, so everyone to the family and all, you know, I know how much you meant to you, and you know how much you meant to me, and he was good at what he done, but he had the church at heart. He didn't want to just mess over things. He wanted to make sure everything worked out with no shortcoming in the money. Now that was his department. He was on account for that money and make sure that every penny come out right. So Sister Terry, you can lift your head up. I know things has been a little rough for you, but God is still there. But he said, I will never leave you alone, but I will be with you all the way, even to the end of the age. So family, I think we have a lot to be thankful for when we had a young man like that living with us, a part of us. I just want to holler out to Lenz, Lennis. I hope he's watching this and I hope he understands that we're yet praying for him. And to all the siblings here, God bless you. I appreciate all of my family. I'm not ashamed of any of them and I hope they're not ashamed of me. But one thing we can rest assured, if we keep living right in the morning, we'll see him again. Do anybody believe that in the morning? Yeah, yeah, that we'll yeah, see yeah. him again. Yeah. But you got to do what he did. You got to give your life to God and live for him. God bless you and thank you, my family. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Amen.
Amen. Once again, can we tell the Lord thank you? Lord, I thank you. Amen. At this time, moving right along in the service, expressions of gratitude and acknowledgement of resolutions coming from Sister Karen Alfred. and to our pastors and to this great family my family god bless you today and uh sister debbie you have to forgive me because most times i don't make comments when i'm doing acknowledgments but this one i just felt like i had to say just a little something uh for those of you that don't know um Lennis's and dennis's mom aunt betty was my mom's sister my mom sarah and so we all grew up together we all grew up the same year me jonathan uh, they all were having babies the same year, and uh, Ken, and uh, I see the Copeland twins, Sherry and Carrie. We all grew up together, and um, I just, I just known them since I was able to know that people existed, I guess. Um, but, uh, and I think I mentioned Jonathan. Jonathan was along with us as well, Jonathan McKnight. And um, Dennis was always unique. Um, he was a unique cousin, and. I used to just say Dennis is Dennis because when he speaks, he's going to come from a, a, a angle you might not be expecting. And um, so we had a lot of fun and um, grew up together. And I see so many cousins and families from near and far that are here to support. And I think that is wonderful. Sister Terry, I, I know that you're loved. You have a lot of support today. Um, I also, I heard my Uncle Willie mention Linus. Um, I just want you to know that Dennis provided top-notch care for his brother Linus. He took care, even though he was in a facility, Dennis took care of his daily hygiene, he took care of his supplemental meals, he bathed and he did whatever he needed to do. And throughout the nursing home, it was echoed how much they saw Dennis there to watch a football game or watch a basketball game or just to be present at his brother's bedside. So as a family, we honor Dennis today. And if you would, just honor me by saying thank you for taking care of Linus. Um, and also to Cousin Linus, if you're watching, we are praying for you and uh, we don't want to forget about Linus. So those of you that are here and are able, we know that you will be going by to check on him. Um, I also want to say um, to those that aided him in his care, there are many. Uh, I see Roy, his barber, Linus's barber, he helped Dennis out with that and his shaving and just so many. And I see uh, his employer. I want to recognize uh, Chairperson McGraw. I see you today. And we just thank God for all of you. We thank you for, there were many resolutions that came in and at the family's request, we are going to read two and uh, we will acknowledge some and the family will be collectively given all of the resolutions uh, so that it can provide comfort to their hearts. Church of God by Faith Incorporated resolution, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom has called to rest, think of Dennis L. Hutchison, we, the Church of God by Faith, bow in reverence and submission to the will of God. We offer our sincerest condolences to Sister Terry Hutchison, the Hutchison and Durant families. In times of sorrow, we can always find consolation in God's word, for he is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The scripture tells us to weep not as others having no hope, but we know that when we have prepared our lives to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. First Timothy 3, 8 through 10 states, likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filter loop, holding the mystery of the faith and a pure conscience, and let these also first be proved, and let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless as Deacon Dennis Hutchison served faithfully. He served as a deacon, finance chairman for our president, Sunday school teacher, and musician. He has finished his course. Family, though your hearts are heavy during this difficult time, you are sustained by your faith in God and the presence of his Holy Spirit. 
Lift up your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help, for your help cometh from the Lord. We, the bishop, executive board, and members of the Church of God by faith, resolve to commit to God your concerns, your grief, and your sorrow. We pray that God will strengthen you in the days to come. He declares in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Prayerfully submitted, the Church of God by Faith Incorporated Family, Bishop James E. McKnight, Jr., Presiding Bishop, Dr. James E. Williams, Executive Secretary, Dr. Nelson Turner, Executive Treasurer, Dr. James Ware, Executive Elder, Dr. Reginald Damon, Executive Elder. Foundation Chapel, Church of God by Faith, Alachua, Florida. Resolution of respect for Deacon Dennis L. Hutchison. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth in me shall never die. John 11, 25 through 26. We, the officers and members of Foundation Chapel, Church of God by Faith, bow our heads in humble submission to the will of God who makes no mistakes. Whereas it has pleased our Heavenly Father to allow the transition of our beloved Deacon Dennis L. Hutchison from the labors of this life to sweet rest. Deacon Hutchison served over 20 years faithfully at Foundation Chapel. He was blessed with many gifts from the Lord and he used each of them to the best of his ability to glorify God. He faithfully served as finance board chairman, deacon board member, choir president, musician, and as a passionate, inspirational Sunday school teacher where he eloquently taught the word of God with clarity and sound doctrine. We feel the loss of our beloved brother who was steadfast servant of the Lord. However, we thank God for the time he allowed him to share with us his earthly life. Deacon Hutchinson motivated and encouraged many of us on numerous occasions to give God our best. His leadership skills and wisdom will not only be missed throughout the church, but through many points of the community where his gentle spirit was encountered. We embrace his devoted wife, our dearest Deaconess Terry Durant Hutchison, along with the Hutchison, Durant, and McKnight families. We know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. We want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that, his loss, that this loss is heaven's day. Death is one aspect of life that we can never prepare for. But God promises to strengthen and keep us. As we accept that our beloved Dennis Hutchison has ceased from all his labor and cares to come home with our Father in glory, where sickness and death no longer exist. May we all find comfort in knowing earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot feel. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be maintained in Foundation Chapel Church archives. Respectfully submitted on this 11th day of February 2024 on behalf of Foundation Chapel Church of God by Faith, Elder Timothy Henderson, the third pastor, superintendent and pastor emeritus Willie McKnight. We also would like to uh, request that the family acknowledge resolutions from Gainesville District Superintendent Elder Duane and Lady Audrey Ganey, Tampa West Coast District Superintendent Elder Neal and Lady Regina Phillips, Solid Rock Church of God by Faith Ruling Elder James and Lady Lily Williams, Church of God by Faith Nat National Board of Finance, Deacon Jerome Flood Chairman, Church of God by Faith District Finance Chairman Network, Deacon Charlie McBride Chairman, Church of God by Faith National Deaconess Ministry, Lady Dolores McKnight, Women's Ministry Director. On behalf of the family, we the family of Dennis Leonard Hutchison express our sincere appreciation for all expressions of love and kindness during the passing of our loved one, a beloved husband, brother, uncle, cousin, and friend. Special acknowledgments to visiting ushers and greeters, program participants, Foundation Chapel, and Gainesville Number One Churches of God by Faith, Alachua County School Board, and special thanks to Chestnut 
Federal Home Staff. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're moving now into the Word. Amen. But before we come, we have a solo coming from Pastor Karen Boston Jackson. And after the solo, we're going to have words of comfort, family prayer, and our benediction coming from Bishop James E. Midnight Jr., presiding prelate of the Church of God by Faith Incorporated, pastor, Stark Church of God by Faith. So, amen, in that order. So at this time, the solo, then the word for comfort. More than 
27 that declares the eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are his everlasting arms and it was from that that in uh, 1887 I believe that he penned the words or published words to that familiar hymn that says what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arm what a blessedness what a peace mind leaning He went on to say, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? And leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord. our presider, Pastor Henderson, to the superintendents, Ganey and Hutchison, superintendent emeritus, uh, to all of our pastors, members of the clergy, to these many friends who have gathered here on this afternoon, to the Hutchison and to the Duran and the Knight family, and to all of you, we greet you and the name of the Lord. 
We're here today to celebrate the life of Dennis L. Hutchison, affectionately known to many of us as Den. To you, Terry, and to Raleigh, and to Lennis, if you're watching, to Pat, to Daphne, we love you. For all of his family, to my family, this certainly profoundly affected all of us to hear of the passing of Dennison. I want to offer to you again my deepest sympathy and we too share in this loss. Dennis was a husband, he was a son, he was a brother, he was a cousin and a friend to many. He was a builder of buildings, but he was also a builder in the kingdom of God. Dennis was a leader, he was a teacher, he was a caretaker. And may I say that he was quite a man. Evidenced by the gathering of so many from far and near to come here on this afternoon in the open airs to celebrate and give tribute to his life. It testifies that he was well respected. Dennis, Dennis loved his family, he loved the church, it's already been said, and he loved his friends, and um, uh, he was there for so many. What an example uh, he made, left, in care of first his father, and his brother, his mother, uh, and then it's already been said, is incredible care for his twin brother, Lennis. Uh, Dennis was the one who would step in difficult situations and uh, he would hold them together. Cousin Vicki, I remember too how when you ask him something, he would pause and he wouldn't give you a quick answer. He would contemplate and think about his response until he believed that he had the proper answer and solution. Dennis indeed was a good man. He'll be missed from among us, but he has left us with so many precious memories. Let us remember that death is the common denominator to all living things. But yet death is not the extinguishing of a light, but rather it is the gate to life. I want to call our attention for just a short period, three verses that I like to share from the book of Titus, chapter number two, verse 11. The Lord put on our hearts for this particular time. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thus ends the reading of the holy written word of God. May it, he write its eternal truth on the table of our hearts. I want to just talk for just a few more minutes on this thought of our blessed hope. How do we get through times like these? It is because of our blessed hope. Can we invoke God's blessings? Father, I ask you now, for the next few minutes, take 
scattered thoughts and these words break them in small pieces and feed every heart pray that you declare that it will bring comfort encouragement and perhaps even clarity in some way and all the glory will be thine in Jesus' name Verse 11 through 14 of Titus 2 is one single sentence in the Greek. And it's been called one of the greatest theological statements in Holy Writ, in the Bible. Verse 11 starts with the word for, which introduces... <clears throat> The explanation as to why the apostle had if he had identified some various groups of believers in verses 1 through 10 that God had called to influence the world around them he wanted to make sure that the doctrine of God was attractive to a lost world. The only way that this would be done and this lofty goal would be fulfilled was through the all-sufficient grace of God. It's God's supernatural empowerment that enables the believer to do what we cannot do naturally. The, the Christian life is a supernatural life. It necessitates a continual dependency on the life-giving grace of God. The Isle of Crete was certainly a place that needed the gospel, it needed a witness, it needed light because the Christians were doing that which was right in their own eyes as people are doing today in our world. The text, I love it, it says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. What is the grace of God? May I pause and say that Jesus Christ was the manifestation of the grace of God. And it says that he has appeared unto all men. Certainly this text is not saying that all men are saved, but all men can be saved through the grace of God and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know it well, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life the grace of god that bringeth salvation was manifested through jesus christ but may i say that where grace reigns grace trains sad commentary today is that there are so many people who confess Christ whose lives does not reflect Christ but may I say again where grace reigns grace trains and it says in verse the next verse teaching us here's what grace does teaching us this is what grace does, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. Three things that grace teaches us. Grace teaches us to live soberly. That means that we live sensibly. We live with self-control. We have control over ourselves and over our own desires. Grace also teaches us to live righteous. 
It speaks of our relationship with others. Righteously means that we handle other people rightly and justly and with integrity. Righteously means we love our neighbors and we treat people right. Finally, grace teaches us to live godly in this present age. It teaches us to live with a devotion to God and to glorify God in all that we do. Our salvation should lead us to self-mastery. It should lead us to right relationships with people and it should lead us to a sincere devotion to God. Doesn't this sound like Dennis? Self-mastery. A right relationship with people. And then an unwavering devotion to God. It's all said and done. Isn't that really all that matters? Not, not that we be impressive with people. But that we have self-mastery. That we treat others right and with integrity. The grace of God ought to teach us in such a way that folks don't have to come looking for us to get their money back. Amen. Amen means we are honest and fair with folks and then we are sincere about our devotion to Christ and if we're there then the apostles say we can look for that blessed hope glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ two things here he says first we look for that blessed hope. Somebody say, what is our blessed hope? Well, it's, and I don't have time to unwrap it, but it's really, let me hasten and say it's just, that blessed hope that we have today is the resurrection of a new body. Uh, there's coming a day that we're going to pull off these old bodies. And we're going to get up again with a blessed hope. And a uh, glorious body. We take off these old bodies which are subject to sickness and disease. We're going to put on a brand new body. A glorified body where we'll be able to live with him forever. Does anybody have that hope? Then secondly, we're looking for the glorious Paul called it the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. We're looking for that glorious appearing. And may I say what a glorious appearing it will be. I don't really have the words to describe the glory of his appearing. But I read the words of one apostle who said it this way in Revelations 1.12. He said, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed in a robe, reaching to his feet. And a gird across his chest, a golden sash. His head and his hair was like white, white, like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze when it has made, been made to glow in the furnace and his voice was like the sound of many waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars and 
out of his mouth came the sharp to as sword and his face was like the sun shining in the strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet like a dead man and he placed his right hand on me saying do not be afraid I am the first and the last and the living one and I was dead and behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. Is there anybody here know that Jesus? That was dead but he is alive and he is alive forevermore. What a glorious day that will be so as I close let me just leave you with a couple of things to ponder all of our lives is in God's hands none of us here have our destiny in our own hands it's Job that said in 12 and 10 for the life of every living thing is in his hand. And the breath of every human being. James picked up that thought in 4 and 13. He says, look here, you who say today or tomorrow we will, we're going to a certain town and I will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fall. It's here a little while and then it's gone. What you ought to say is if it's the Lord want us to and we live and do this or that. Otherwise you are boasting about your own pretentious plans. Amen. And all such boasting is evil. Our lives are in God's hand. And then the final thought that I want to leave with you is that life is brief. And let's make the most of it. Wisdom says remember God and keep him first remember God and keep him first wisdom also teaches us to never take one another for granted let's not take each other for granted wisdom also teaches us to Affirm our love for one another often. Let's not assume. Finally, wisdom says to us, let's say, I'm sorry quickly. Don't, don't wait for tomorrow. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Can we pray now? Father, we just thank you for uh, this day and Thank you for this time of celebration and reflection. Thank you for affording us these 62 years with Dennis. God, we acknowledge that this is hard. Many of our hearts are broken and we're still having difficulty 
wrapping our hands, despite the truth that we know, wrapping our hands around Genesis party. But you have taught us in your word and everything give thanks. This is your will concerning us. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the impact that he has made. Thank you because he lived soberly, righteously, and godly. Thank you for the example that he left. Thank you for all that he has done for his family, for the kingdom, for the church. And so now, God, I ask your continued blessings and grace. Would you strengthen Terry? Hold her in your hands and comfort her and be her strength. May your peace that passes all understanding, Lord, keep her heart. Today, tomorrow, next week, and in days to come, surround her with people that will encourage her, people that will speak words of life and wisdom. May the right company surround her. Lord, I pray for Raleigh. It's even a greater charge as he feels the weight of that on his shoulders. Pray, Lord, that you hold him up, that you strengthen him in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for Lennis. Encourage Lennis, strengthen Lennis. I know you're there. Lord, we admit we don't understand all of this. It's, it's beyond us, but you know. And, and I ask God that you give him peace and, and, and all of those places that Dennis feel. May there be no void. May there be no lack in his care. May there be no times that any need that he has go on there. Bless him in Jesus' name. Pray for Pat. God, old Pat. Bless her name. Pray for Pat and Daphne. Bless those sisters. Strengthen them now. All of my family, pray now that you surround us. We have been taught in your word that you will never leave us. You will never, ever, ever forsake us. And we know that you're here and with us even right now to all of those who have gathered to this great company of family and friends. We are staying in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we, we're going to praise you. We're going to continue to give you glory. Through our pain and through our tears, we're going to continue to glorify your name. We're going to love you and we're going to love one another. And we are looking for that blessed hope in Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? If you will... Now, the benediction is he said, and I want to say, let me just pause and say thank you for coming, all of you that are here. Thank you for the support of this family. And I'm sure you will continue to pray. And as we close now, the love of God, the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit, that will ever rest in the Bible, all this people in my prayer. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you now.
A man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. But man dieth and wasteth the way. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? So man lieth down and rises not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor sh be raised out of their sleep. For as much as it is that pleased Almighty God in his own wise providence, take out of the world the soul of the departed, we therefore commit this body to the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. And the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it, looking for the general resurrection. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Our Father, which we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, we acknowledge thee. As you accept this, your child back home, through good and bad, sad and jubilee, you've never left Dennis alone. So Father, we remind thee that we too hope to see you on your heavenly throne. But until then, Father, it's with our deepest sympathy we return to you, your son home from long. Family, we have my brother Chuck, yourself, the entire Chestnut family, Chestnut here on Homestead. Please know that we recognize that you know, love, and respect by many, and you know, love, and respect me. And in spite of that, in your hour of need, you thought enough to allow us to serve you. As much as we regret you experienced this tragedy, please know it has been an honor to serve. With the benediction having been said, this concludes the services of Brother Hutchinson. The family and friends might feel at ease.